and gentlemen. Last movement, A1, tempo primo. Jakowski and his friend concerto so we can be finishing with our cleaning. <laughs> Just because you're substituting for Paderewski, do not forget you're still only a member of the regular orchestra. In my score, I see violins, violas, horns, and all the instruments. Well, Mr. Damros, the solo instrument in a piano... Please, hotel. Mr. Salerno, this is no time for one of your fanciful discourses on music. Will you kindly play the number as I conduct it? What's the matter with that? It was Salerno, not Tchaikovsky. I'm sorry. I just don't feel it your way. Perhaps you'd better get someone else. Very well. Angelo, will you take Mr. Salerno's place so we can go on with the rehearsal? All right, gentlemen. B1, four bars before tempo primo. <laughs> John, Jonathan, you stop that. There's nothing to laugh at. Mr. Salerno. You keep out of this. Oh, there, there, Nora. There's no skin off your pretty nose if the contrary prima donna wants to walk out on a soft bird. He's not a prima donna. He can be so nice when he wants to. Too big for his britches, if you ask me. Darling, you intend to work all night now as well as all day? I'm just finishing. Well, I'm sure the bar of directors will be very grateful for your diligence. But you must have some time to yourself, you know. This isn't work. Well, it isn't play. Just the same. Take me, for instance. Maybe what you need is a bit more system. But I like being here. When I'm alone here after a concert and it's quiet like tonight... You know what I mean. When you're here alone, don't you stop sometimes and just listen? Listen to what? Oh, to the chairs and the walls and the floors and out oh, of the whole building. It's heard so much great music, it's full of it. Can't you hear it? All I can hear is the plumbing. Ah. Uh. Ryan? Mr. Salerno. Oh, excuse me for intruding like How this, How did you but get in? You left the house door open. I saw you from my window. I... I'd like to apologize. 
I was very rude when you spoke to me this afternoon. After all, you are the only person I've been able to talk to for weeks. But I never talk. I know, but you're an awfully good listener. Won't you listen to me now? Well, Don't I... be such a goose. I have no intention of harming you. I may just as well tell you the truth. I had to talk to someone. You think I'm quite mad, don't you? Well, I am. Don't jump. Yes, sir. Well, I don't expect you to understand me, but I told you you were perfectly safe. Yes, sir. Life, Miss Ryan, is a conspiracy. A lot of people blame things about themselves on life. What's wrong with that? Except that I don't want to be one of those who bow to any conductor just to be easy and pleasant and get jobs. I have to follow my conviction. Mr. Salerno, I understand how you feel. But I think you should go back to Mr. Damrosch in the morning and tell him you're sorry. He knows what a fine pianist you are. I know he'll take you back. No. The music is a matter of personal feeling. If I get up in the morning and it's dark and rainy, I play one way. On a nice day, after a long walk through the park, I may want to play altogether differently. We'd have a fine orchestra if everybody played like that. I might have known it. You're just like everybody else. I'm not just like everybody else. And even if I were, what's wrong with that? It's stupid. Even so, it's better than quarreling all the time and being a prima donna like everybody says you are. Who says I'm a prima donna? Well, John, for one. John? John Donovan over at the hall. He says you're too big for your britches. Oh, it's very flattering to learn that my temperament was discussed by such enlightened critics. All right. All right, say anything you like. But you might listen once in a while instead of always trying to make brilliant remarks. You're a fine musician, but this morning Mr. Damrosch was right. Oh, was he? Yes, he was. Pardon me. Naturally. A person in your position should... Oh. I'm sorry. That's all right. I deserved it. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm the world's biggest boor. I can't help it. I've always been. Oh, no, you're not. You probably know as much or even more about music than I do. I know very little about anything. But you upset me. Telling me I'm stupid and acting as if it's ridiculous for me even to have heard of Tchaikovsky. I heard him conduct once. You? Yes. It was 18 years ago. In 1891. During the first week Carnegie Hall was open. I was only a little girl at the time, but I've never forgotten a single moment of it. All the way over from Ireland, I remember I'd been trying to imagine what America would be like. But, well, now that I was really here, all I could think was, this wasn't America. I died and this was heaven. That's what I thought. Well, it was just before intermission. The gentlemen in their shiny top hats, and all the grand ladies in their evening gowns and fine furs. And there was so much to hear and to see. And so many flowers. be squashed to a pulp if I try to take you through that mob. Will you wait right here like a good girl while I go fetch your Aunt Molly? Thank you. 
Thank you. You're very kind. Excellent, Baumeister. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, whose little girl are you? Hmm? What was that? You can't speak? So pretty, but you cannot speak. Yes, I can. Well, good. What's your name? What? Nora. Nora. Why, that's a lovely name. Little Nora. Oh, Nora. No. I'm so sorry, Mr. Damrosh. That's all right, Mrs. O'Malley. It's my poor late sister's child, God rest her soul. She just came to me today, straight from Ireland. Frightened as a bird she is. I had to be on duty in the hall tonight, so I left her at home with a friend. She's been she... no trouble to anyone, Mrs. O'Malley. Have you, Nora? Now, you're very kind, Mr. Damrosh, but I'll take her away now. But uh, what about the concert? Have you ever heard a big symphony orchestra, Nora? But there's no seats, not even in the gallery, Mr. Damrush. Then we'll make a seat. Come, Nora. We couldn't have you miss this. Come. Emil. Yes, sir. We have an unexpected visitor. A chair, please. Yes, sir. Well, years from now, when you're a big girl, you can always say you saw Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky conduct one of his own compositions from your own private box. Tchaikovsky went back to Russia not long after the concert, so I never got to hear him again. But somehow I can still see him. So dark and strange. Almost like some of his own music. I suppose it's like that with everyone. We never forget what was impressed on us as children. You are still only a child. I most certainly am not. Yes, you are. Turn your head. No, not this way, that way. Dot the light so I can see you. Be still, will you? I don't intend to bite you. I merely want to get a look at you. Mr. Salerno, I think you'd better go now. Be quiet. I don't believe I ever really noticed you before. You shouldn't be over there dusting seats and polishing brass. And what's wrong with polishing brass? See here, will you stop flying at me with that Irish temper every time I open my mouth? Then don't talk the way you do. Besides, I may not always be polishing brass. No? No. I've been working in my spare time, and as soon as there's an opening, they're going to give me a job in the office. Oh, I'm glad to hear they've got the sense at least to do that. Do you live alone here? Yes. Well, that's unfortunate. See, if you had a family, I'd like to call some evening and properly present myself. Mr. Salerno, you'd really better go. Listen, you do like music, don't you? Oh, yes, but... Tomorrow night... No, 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 I won't tell you what I have in mind. Will you meet me tomorrow night at the stage door, right after the concert? No, Mr. Salerno. What now? And don't call me Mr. Salerno. It's Tony. All right, then, Tony, but I still can't go out with you. Why not? Oh, why must you make it so difficult? Don't 
don't you realize that you're... Well, you're an artist, and I'm just a nobody. Oh, fiddlesticks. I like you. I like the way you look. I like your spirit. I see no sense beating around the bush about it. No. Please. See, I'll have to make a confession. I didn't come over tonight to apologize. I could have done that tomorrow. I came because I was lonely. So, will you come? I'll have to think about it. Good night. I knew you would come. Oh, you did. Is this the place? Sure. Our host is Anton Tribbi, first timpanist of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Hello, Tony. Oh. Tony, come in, my friend. How, How are, are you? How are you? <laughs> Sorry if I'm late. Nora, this is Anton and Kat. How do you do? How do you do? do? Hello, oh, hello. Now, this is Leonid and Alfonso and Otto and Carl. Now, please, sit down. Thank you. Tony, darling. <laughs> and with a young lady. And huh? such a pretty young lady, too. <laughs> but how is this, Tony? Up to now, he was always such a woman hater. No, 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 no. Uh, that isn't true. Now, Nora, pay no attention to anything you hear. <laughs> Nora, why? I know Nora. Of course I do. She always lets me have the polish for my timpani. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Little Nora, always so sweet. <laughs> Tony, it's wonderful. Sit where you are, everybody. I bring beer. Tony, I must congratulate you. On what? On your brilliant piano playing tonight. The Parkman should have heard. It was brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now, Nora, why don't you help yourself, please? Oh, they look wonderful. For a living, Anton plays timpani and gives lessons, but in his heart, he is a cook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone helps himself. Alfonso. Get your viola, we're gonna have some music. Yeah, you two boys, you had your sandwiches, oh, you had your beer. Now, come on, let's hear some music. <laughs> Tony, you are the piano. Oh. <laughs> Katinka, Tony is tired tonight. You be the piano. Eh? He's tired? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I hope you like music. Musicians are crazy people. Just look at me. Every day a rehearsal, every night a concert, come Saturday night, playing again. Why? Because in my heart, I am a violinist. In my soul, I'm a pianist. In my imagination, I'm a conductor. But for a living, I'm just a timpanist. There's nothing wrong with that. Ah, but it hurts. I stand on this stage, I look around, I see everybody around me is making music. Uh, the violin, uh, the cello, uh, the trumpet, each one, everyone, beautiful, marvelous, wonderful. And I, what am I doing? Nothing. I just listen. And by the way, where I stand is the best seat in the house to listen to music. <laughs> and all I got to do to get it is just once in a while make boom. And that's all. <laughs> that's all. And now I'm going to listen again. By this time, Schumann. Uh, the Quintet by Schumann. Do you know Schumann? Bum, bararim, tararidum. Schumann. Thank you. 
Why didn't you tell me you played tonight? Well, there wasn't anything to tell, especially. I simply decided to take your advice. I'm glad. And I'm glad too. I think we're playing the wrong music. Just look at them. We should be playing the wedding march by Mendelssohn instead of the piano quintet by Schumann. So quick? Oh, I think you only imagine. Gajinger? It's going to be a duet. Maybe with some voices added to it. Orchestra. Allegro Resoluto. <laughs> Have a cup of tea and a nice long talk. <laughs> the luck of the Irish, do you? And many of them. Is Tony up there? Why, no, he's gone to rehearsal. Yes, I know, but... Oh, uh, rehearsal, I... I didn't know it was that late, I guess. Well, I, I'll see him over there. Come on up for a cup of tea. Oh, no, no, thank you. How's the baby? Oh, more wonderful every day. Ah, uh, that's fine. Good day to you, Nora. John, is there anything...
How do you do? Oh, I've been so worried. I couldn't imagine what happened. Just a slight softening of affection. Wouldn't it be beautiful? It's not my birthday. Darling, I have a confession to make. I'm intoxicated. Tell me. I swear it. It's embarrassing, but it's a fact. I'm intoxicated right, right up to here, even though I don't look it. <laughs> here. But you are not mad with Tony, are you? Of course I'm not. Let me see. Oh, you are frightfully mad. <laughs> Tony, I'm not. I'm never mad at anything you do. I couldn't be. You know that. <laughs> Only you're so silly. Bringing me all these flowers and in the middle of winter, too. <laughs> Ivan. Ivan, let's pack up our things and go south. We'll have a second honeymoon, hmm? <laughs> now I know you're crazy. Anyhow, we can't. You have your work. Work? Who cares? Who first invented work and bound the free and holiday rejoicing spirit down? You'd better get she... some food and get to sleep. No, don't go. Don't go away. Come here. You love me? You know I do. Uh, you're not gonna. I'm not. Why not? Mm. Tony's been bad. Ooh. Very bad. What have you done now? Quit my job. You didn't. Like that. Oh, oh, no. Now you, oh, you are frightfully mad now. <laughs> Tony, I'm oh, not. Don't only... be mad with Tony. I couldn't help it. We'll get along all right. I wasn't thinking of that. Oh, dear, why can't you be like other people? Why must you always quarrel? Quarrel? I never quarrel with anybody. I have never quarreled with you, have I? Oh, no. There's roast in the oven. Get something to eat and get to bed. I won't be gone long. Hey, well, where, where are you going? Over to the hall. What for? To see the concert, Meister. Oh. And, and babble some trumped-up story about my being ill so that I can crawl back on my hands and knees and be forgiven? No. Thank you. Tony, hush. One of us has to be sensible. And what if I say I choose not to be sensible just once? I don't know what's come over you. Look, I do know that you've said time and time again that playing in Carnegie Hall with the Philharmonic is what every artist hopes for and dreams of. Well, you're in Carnegie oh, Hall. Carnegie Hall, Carnegie Hall. Don't you think of anything but Carnegie Hall? I'm sick of Carnegie Hall. I'm sick of being every new and sweeping boy. There's more than one symphony orchestra in the world. I'm sick of it, you hear me? I'd rather play in a saloon. You really are ill. I'd better call it a... Oh, no, 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 you won't. Tony, let me go. I no, 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 I don't trust you. It's time you found out that this is my life you are meddling with, not yours. Don't be childish. Childish? Yes, childish. Nobody's meddling with your life. Not much. I have enough of being told what to do at the hall and here, too. Now I'll decide what I'll do with my life. Not you.
Breakfast is ready now, Tony. Come on, you better hurry. You'll be late for school. Come on, sir. 23, 23. Ah, there you are. I was on my way to the office, but I just had to tell you. The boss wants to see you. Me? What for? Oh, no, no. There's nothing to be alarmed about. I just happened to be in a position to overhear a conversation. And the upshot of it is you're to have a new job. In the office. With more money, mind you. What do you think of that now? Oh, I, I can hardly believe it. Oh. You can't go far wrong if you stick to a Donovan. <laughs> oh, there's a man locked in a bathroom in one of the studios. I'll see you later. Algebra, A. English, A. United States history, A. He's a brave, bright man you'll be having for a son one of these days, Nora. Reminds me of myself when I was a boy. You know, how old is he now? Thirteen. No, he'd be too young yet. Too young for what? To take her around to the Kalani Club of an evening, meet some big men at the party. You know, a young man that sharp can go a long way in the city nowadays if he starts out with the right connections. No, John. No? What do you mean, no? You mean Tony's too good for politics? Or is it one of them long-haired musicians you're intending making of him? If I can. Nora, you're daft. I'm a very fortunate woman. You are. and Bruno Walter won't wait for us. I'm getting ready fast as I can, Tony. What's he conducting tonight? Prelude to Meistersinger. Oh, good. Well, I'm all ready. You better get dressed yourself. while the concert is on. Uh, she's a smart one, that Nora. What's smart about it? Being here every night when she could be staying home after a day's work? Well, this is her most important work, seeing that Tony has the advantage of hearing all the finest music in the world. But I thought he was studying piano. He's studying music. And what with Nora's position here? Don't you realize what she's doing? No. Why, she's making Carnegie Hall a private school for the boy. And I tell you, there isn't another lad in the whole of America that could have such a break. And she knows it. Well, of all things. I guess you're right at that. Aye. Ah, she's a smart one, that Nora. Takes a mother to think of such a plan. Men just haven't got the feeling. No? No. Well, good night, Mr. Donovan. Good night to you, Nelly.
Here you are, Tony. Maybe someday you'll be playing a concert here yourself. Le bruit des jours de la vallée de 
I'll take care of that. Young man, you seem to be very careless with other people's property. You know what that is? That's Carnegie Hall. So what? So it's Carnegie Hall. John, thank you for helping. Here you are, Nora. The holy of holies. What do you want at home? Well, now let me see. <laughs> John, are you laughing at me? Oh, not at all, my dear. Not at all. Only you're in Carnegie Hall now. You have no need of that. I don't care. If it weren't for Carnegie Hall, I, I don't understand. Know. If Tony doesn't turn out to be a second Patroski, it won't be your fault. Hey, speaking of Tony, he was here a minute ago. I wonder what happened to him. Tony! He just went out, ma'am. Oh. Tony! Nora, why don't you let the boy be a boy? There's no harm in playing. Tony! Yeah? Will you come inside, please, dear? Okay. It isn't that I don't want you to enjoy yourself, Tony, and to get to know the other children in the building. I want you to know them. But when you're playing like that, I worry. It's dangerous down there in the street. But I'm careful. Yes, but suppose something should happen to one of your hands. I never thought of that. You do want to go on studying and be a fine pianist, don't you? Yes. Well, if you're really serious about your work, you must begin to think of these things. It'll be a lot easier now that we're living here at the hall. That's why we moved here. Now you can really concentrate on your music. Sure, I know, Mom. Moving here was a good idea, and I'll be careful. Good. <laughs>
Is this what you wanted? Yes. Give that to Tony and tell him to practice hard. Bach and Bach and Bach. Good night. Good night. Bach. Music. It's fun. That's the way I feel sometimes. Besides, it doesn't do any harm. I certainly think you're wasting your time. It's nice to relax once in a while. Still, I think you'll agree that this is slightly better music. Mr. Rubenstein sent it to you. He says you must practice Bach, Bach, and Bach again. <laughs> All right, Mother. Oh, I want you to hear a new nocturne I've been playing. Chopin? Let's just make sure that it's Chopin and not Tin Pan Alley. Damrosh, I can't tell you how I appreciate your calling on me here in my new office. When I heard of your latest promotion, I couldn't resist dropping in to congratulate you. <laughs> That's very nice of you. You see, I am perhaps the only one who remembers a tiny, tiny Irish girl who saw and heard my opening of Carnegie Hall way back in 1891. You may recall the tremendous enthusiasm which was tender to Tchaikovsky, who had come all the way from Russia at my invitation. My, that seems a long time ago, doesn't it? It was, my dear. And only a few of us have followed down through all the years. Hello, Mother. Oh, come in, Tony. You remember my son, Dr. Damrosh? Why, I'm delighted indeed. How do you do, Doctor? Thank you. I'm very well indeed. How are you, Tony? And how is the piano coming along? Oh, fine, sir. That's good. Uh, I thought I'd better tell you, I'm going to be a little late. Jan Pierce called me. He's auditioning down in the Chamber Music Hall and wants me to accompany. Some old frump wants to learn to sing. Tony! Well, that's the way they are. Well, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. He's a fine boy, Laura. He certainly is, Dr. Damrosh. <laughs> stop. Hello, Tony. Hello, Mr. Pierce. I hope I'm not too late. Uh, 
Tony, this is Miss... Uh... Ruth Haynes. Tony Salerno. How do you do? Hello. You have a very lovely voice, Miss Haynes. When would you like to begin? In September, if I may. I'll be out of town all summer. That suits me perfectly. I'm planning to be away most of the summer myself. There's one thing I'd like you to think about in the meantime. Learn to relax. Singing must be, uh, well, uh, fun. Even I enjoy it. Let me show you what I mean. Tony, solo mio. just like you before, either. Please. Well, I know I'm not very good at this sort of thing, but I've got to talk to you. What about? Well, about, well, about your singing, about your music, about a lot of things. Really? I... Oh, please don't. I know you probably think I'm some kind of a nut or something, but you said yourself you were going away for the rest of the summer, and, well, you can't do that. Not unless I know more about you, but at least where you live. Oh, we can't talk here. Come on, let's find some place. Tony, Hello, Henry. you've got to help me. You've got to help me. Save my life. It's Pinza. Since three o'clock, we're trying to fit a costume for him. First is the pants, then the blouse, then the collar, then the belt, then the sleeve, then the rope. Now, mamma mia, it's the hat. Yes, it's the hat. Don't you understand? The man don't understand the personality of a hat. And I want to tell you something. Please, let's go. Let's go before I go cuckoo. Crazy myself. Oh, please, please, let's go. Is this Enzio Pins of the Basso? Yes, of the Metropolitan. It will only be a minute. Look, what about dinner? Dinner? Well, I... Come in! Oh, it's you again! Tony, at last an intelligent human being. Imbecile. Tony, come in. Monsieur Pizza, ce sera merveilleux, vous assure. Ce sera fantastique, je vous assure. Shh. Look, I ask you. Yeah. Look what they would have me wear. Can even a nightingale sing wearing a hat like this? Well, I don't know. It depends on what it's for. Don Giovanni, of course. Shh. Young lady, please. I leave it to you. Am I Don Giovanni? Well, I... Uh, you know the opera? Well, yes. Don Giovanni is handsome, very rich. He is a bad man. But the ladies are crazy for him. 
Si, Would please, you be sir, crazy sir. for me in prison? No, it makes me look fat. Women will not be crazy for Don Giovanni that is fat. They might if they heard you sing. I will not be a fat Don Giovanni. <laughs> oh. I just remember that Don Giovanni doesn't wear a hat with this costume. Come on, Mr. Pinza, let's warm up. Please, just try it. All right. Oh, please, yes! Hotel Estremo Addio, Palagio Alatero, Credo Sepolcro. Mr. Pinzer, this is Miss Haynes. How do you do, Miss Haynes? How do you do? Won't you please sit down? Thank you. Are you a singer? Well, sort of. You are very pretty. Mr. Pinzer. What? Someone seems to have written a pause in here. A pause? What pause? <laughs> yes. I believe I do see a pause there. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it was kind of an emergency. Don't mention it, my boy. I have been confronted by many such emergencies in my time. <laughs> All right, Don Giovanni, now. Vincandino, calda la testa, una che festa fa preparar. Se trovi in piazza qualche ragazza, dico con quella cerca menar. Dico con quella cerca menar, cerca menar, cerca menar. C'è qualcuno di me, la nasasia, il minuetto, di la follia, di la levanna, fare ballar. Il minuetto, fare ballar, di la follia, fare ballar, di la levanna, fare ballar. E io frattanto dall'altro canto, un viste quella, pomoreggiar, pomoreggiar, pomoreggiar. La verista, dopo mattina, una regina di elementar. Alla verista, una regina di elementar. C'è trovi in piazza, qualche ragazza, di quella, cerca me Mattina, una decina di elementar, senza alcun ordine, la danza sia, di il minuetto, di la follia, di la levanda, fare papà. Alla verista, dopo mattina, una decina di elementar, una decina di elementar, una decina di elementar, di elementar, di elementar, e mi devi aumentare. <ride> Miss Haynes has made the reservation for two. Oh, this way, please. You know her? Oh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Cocktail? Uh, no, thanks. We have a very good imported champagne. If you wish a bottle placed on ice. No, thanks. Thanks very much. Very well. And if my caress makes a new
Well, now you know the worst. So that's why we came here. When you asked me where I'd studied voice, well, after listening to Mr. Pins and Mr. Pierce, I couldn't tell you all I knew about music was what I'd learned here. I thought you'd better see for yourself. Was it too awful? No, you were marvelous. Thank you. Have you ordered? Uh, no, not yet. I, uh... I'm starved. Let's see. I think I'll have a crab cocktail and tomato bouillon. Just a cup. What are you going to have? The filet steak's awfully nice. Oh, I don't seem to be very hungry all of a sudden. Oh, but Tony, here you're my first guest. Yes? And... Well, of course. You don't think I'd bring you here where I work and... Look, the boss is always asking me to have friends over and I never met anyone I especially cared to bring before. Now you won't even order. Oh, well, in that case, I... Please uh... try the steak. I'll have the steak, rare. Very good. And uh, will the gentleman be having crab cocktail and tomato bouillon? I might as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'd always heard the road to a man's heart was through his stomach, but for a minute you had me scared. I had you scared. Take a look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> Why does the lad put me in the way of a fine dinner and say that for him? You're a grand cook. More coffee? No, thank you. Didn't you even get a name? I should think you might at least have learned that much when you talked to Mr. Pierce. Nora, darling, you're behaving like a typical mother and it's no credit to you. You're supposed to have better sense. Tony's in no trouble. He's not that kind of a lad. He's met the girl and they've no doubt stopped to have a bite to eat somewhere. John, I wonder if you'd mind. I've had a headache all evening. Ah, oh, you poor thing. I'll be gone this minute. And don't you worry any more about Tony. I'm certain he's all right. Of course he is. Do you mind? If you have a headache, you won't be eating this. You're awfully quiet. Thinking? Private? No. Just been thinking how much I've been missing. This? It's not so much. I've been missing a lot. Hello, Mitzi. How are you? Well, you two kids seem to be having a good time. Yes, we are. A wonderful time. Vaughn, this is Tony Salerno, a real piano player. How do you do? Hello, Tony. A real piano player? <laughs> How'd you like to sit in this next number? Oh, I'd never be able to play with you fellas. You'd make me look silly. Never played with a band before. So what? Come on. Please, Tony, just for fun. Okay, I'll try it, but you're gonna be sorry.
to keep you waiting so long, but Ruth, what do you think? Bond wants me to join the band. He does? They're going on tour and the regular pianist can't go. I know, his wife isn't well. I never thought I'd be good enough to play with a band like Vaughn's. I knew you'd be a cinch the minute he heard you. You're going, aren't you? Yes. Gee, it's strange, the way things happen. I mean, when I'm meeting you this afternoon at Pierce's, up till then, all I'd ever thought about was one thing, a piano. And now, everything's changed. You know what I'm trying to say? I think so. Do you really? Mm-hmm. I'll wait his Vaughn here tonight. Until two, I think. Let's go. I want to talk to him before he has a chance to change his mind. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Tony. Good night. Hello, Mother. I thought you were asleep. You're awfully late, Tony. Yes, I guess it is a little late. Have you had dinner? Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I should have called you. Yes, I've had dinner. Come here. Sit down. I was going to tell you this in the morning, but I can't wait. I've got good news, Mom. I've got a job. A job? What kind of a job? I've been waiting for the day that I could come home and tell you you don't have to work anymore. You don't have to devote your whole life to Carnegie Hall. Save every dollar for my education. Now I'm going to earn money and make things easy for you. I'm on my way, Mom. I can feel it in my bones. But what is the job, Tony? Playing piano for Vaughn Monroe. We're going on a tour. Florida, Texas, and on to California. It'll be a wonderful experience. That's a dance band, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Well, I know it isn't what you'd want me to do, but you see, I don't think of it as dance music. It's new music, full of life. It's what people like and understand. Oh, Tony. It's what people want to hear. Tony, this isn't for you. It's just not for you. But I've already told Vaughn Monroe I'd do it. Well, then you can call him in the morning and tell him you've changed your mind. No, I can't do that. Tony, it's late and I'm very tired. You must be too. Wait a minute, look. I want that job. I want it because I like modern music, because I want to be on my own. What can you have against that? But you're not an entertainer. You're a musician. 
Oh, now be sensible. You've worked very hard. I'm not going to let you throw away your career on a dance band. It isn't throwing anything away. Please, try to understand. Oh, I know how hard you've worked and how much you expect of me. But you can't force me into Carnegie Hall. I don't want it. I want to be on my own, like anybody. I knew this was coming. I've known it for a long time. Maybe I should have told you before, but... Anyway, here it is. You've loved every minute of my studying. It's become an obsession with you. But not with me. Tony, stop. Stop talking like that. You don't realize what you're doing. Listen, you might as well know this. I've found out that I've been studying in Carnegie Hall to please you, not me. That's wrong. Don't you see? It's wrong. And now whom are you going to please? That girl? No, myself. Ruth had nothing to do with this. I doubt that very much. But I'm not going to let you ruin your life. I'm not going to let you throw away everything I've worked so hard for. You're too young to understand that what you're doing is a terrible mistake. Once and for all, Tony. You're not going to take this job. You're going to go on studying, and when you're ready... I'm never going to be ready. And let me tell you this once and for all. I'm going my own way, and nothing's going to stop me. Tony, you're talking just like your father. That's what he said just before... Mother! Then maybe my father was right, too. Tony. I see one thing very clearly. The time has come to untie your apron strings. I'm sorry, Mother. Goodbye. Feeling well tonight, Mr. Heifetz? Oh, uh, I feel fine. Fine? Never better. Well, you don't look it. It is the same old story. Have you ever heard of stage fright? Oh, no, Mr. Reiner. You're not going to tell me that Mr. Heifetz has stage fright. After all, he's played Carnegie Hall for so many years. And with so much success. You know, a concert in Carnegie Hall is, I'm sure, a dream of every violinist all over the world. It gives you a most peculiar feeling, even, even when you think about it. Yes, indeed, it is a strange sensation right at the pit of your stomach. Did you ever feel it? Only when I eat too much. Well, good luck, Mr. Heifetz. Thank good you. luck to you too, Mr. Reiner. Thank you. You're a lucky fellow. In the case of a deserving young artists like Alice, there would be only a nominal charge of $75. $75? I'm afraid you see all the lessons. When would you like Alice to make her debut? Oh, any time, only... Could she appear, say, the 20th of October? Oh, yes, but... A girl of Alice's talent deserves to be heard. Don't you worry about the money, Mrs. Owens. We'll manage somehow. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Salerno. Thank you. Not at all. Good luck. Thank you. Goodbye. You have a great heart, Nora. But you'll end up with an empty pocketbook. I've heard her play. She has great promise. Any word of Tony? No, no word. Nora, darling, are you positive you don't want me to go out and find him and bring him to you? Do you know where he is? Yes. 
He knows where he can find me. Speak to him. Pretend to you it was in the wrong. I was in the wrong. But I'm afraid I'm just not capable of any bigness right now. When you've allowed your whole life to be aimed down what you thought was a well-marked trail, and then suddenly the trail isn't there anymore. Excuse me now, please, John. I've got to go downstairs and say goodbye. You're not thinking of leaving. I see no point in staying now. Would you? Nora, you can't leave the hall. I'd rather leave than spend what years I have left being reminded each day of what a failure I've been.
Hello, Nora. I just heard what you did for Alice. Alice? Yes, uh, Alice, uh, Alice Owens. You know, her mother spoke to me just before the concert. It was a lovely gesture, but you shouldn't have done it. You know, I've been watching Alice for some time. And whatever the cost is, I'd like to take care of it. You know, you're doing a grand thing for these young people, helping them get it started. Oh, but I'm not doing it. Oh, y yes, you are. But it isn't me. It's... It's Carnegie Hall. But, Nora, you are Carnegie Hall. Well, I'll be seeing you. dinner started. Oh, it's been such a hot day, I believe I'll go out. Why don't you take the afternoon off? Oh, golly, Mrs. Salerno. With you just back from a month in the country, I've been having all my afternoons off. There's so little I need, Margaret. Yes, ma'am. He sure is a big success, isn't he? I mean, Mr. Tony. I bet you sometimes wish he wasn't so busy. What? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. The girls and I have organized the Tony Salerno fan club, and we get every record he makes. Yes, he's very popular. He sure is. at my coming here, but I had to talk to someone. You're playing one of Tony's records. Yes, I was. Do you mind if I sit down? Please do. Tony and I had a quarrel, Mrs. Salerno. I wouldn't bother you with it, only... Only I thought you might be able to tell me what to do. It wasn't about anything. Tony was playing at St. Francis in San Francisco, and I was doing the vocals. One night, I happened to say something about the way he was playing a number, and... Well, he got simply furious. Well, I got furious, too. I know I was wrong, but... Tony knows a lot more about music than I do, but... He had no right to talk to me like that. Nobody has any right to talk to me like that. So, I walked out. I see. The band was leaving the hotel anyway. I thought if I came here and spent a few days with my sister, he might... Well, yesterday, I... I sent him a wire, and I, I said I was sorry, and I hoped he was sorry, too. Then I'd meet him in Chicago. Well, this morning... This is the wire that came back. Stay where you are. We'll explain later. Tony. So, you're still in love with him? I'm crazy about him. That's good. Wait a minute. 
did you say Tony is now? In Chicago? Yes. Hello. Mr. Donovan, please. Oh, thank you. Hello, John. This is Nora. Yes, I just got back today. Listen, John, you've got to help me. Well, of course, Nora. What is it? I need two airplane tickets for Chicago. Yes, two, for tonight. Right away. Oh, but, Mrs. Salerno, I can't do that. Just a minute, John. You can't do what? Go to Chicago. Tony doesn't want me to come. You read the wire. Don't be foolish. No, no, John, not you. I'm talking to Ruth. Ruth, Tony's wife. Yes, she's here, and she's in trouble, and I've got to help her get to Tony. He's in Chicago. Oh, is he now? Well, what do you know? All right. All right. I'll get the tickets for you. Oh, no, no. You stay right where you are. I'll have my son-in-law, Doolittle, bring them in to you, and then he can drive you at the airport. Hello? Hello? The woman must be daft. Have I got a good idea? <laughs> you don't understand. I have some pride. If he wants me back, let him ask me. Do you want your pride or do you want Tony? Oh, now, we may not have much time and you'll have to pack. Where does your sister live? 360 Crescent, Queens. Fine, that's right on the way to the airport. I'll pick you up when Doolittle gets here with the tickets. And hereafter, if you have to quarrel, make sure it's over something more important than how your man happens to play the piano. Let him play it any way he likes. Backwards, forwards, or even upside down, if that's what he likes. Yes, Mother. Saving their pride is what makes lonely old women like me. I ought to know. I've been through it twice. Glad you finally got here. You were so late, I thought something might have happened to you. It was this fool. Who's a fool? Never mind, just take us to the airport. Did you say the airport? Of course I said the airport. And while I think of it, you'd better give me the tickets. What tickets? Our plane tickets. I don't know nothing about no tickets. You mean John didn't give them to you? No. Oh, wait till I get my hands on that blundering, doddering old idiot. Well, we'll just have to go clear back to the hall for them. Get in, Ruth. Get us there as quickly as you can. Nora, darling, you look so charming when you smile. You have such a lovely smile. John, what on earth do you mean by all this? Where are our plane tickets? Shh, 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 shh. You're only making yourself conspicuous with that Irish temper. There's a reason for everything you'll soon learn. Patience, I always say, is one of the cardinal virtues. Rubbish. Come along now. John Donovan, have you gone out of your mind? I didn't come here to listen to concerts or to any more of your nonsense, either. I want our plane tickets. Nora, darling, how do you ever expect to control others when you can't control yourself? Come along now, you too.
beautiful, but now you've made us miss our plane. Good evening, Nora. Oh, Mr. Downs, I, I'm so upset and flustered, I, I... Well, I can imagine. And this is the younger Mrs. Salerno, isn't it? Tom's oh. wife? Yes. Dear me, I'm even forgetting my manners. Ruth, this is Mr. Olin Downs. How do you do? Such a pleasure. Uh, Mr. Downs, you'll excuse us. The intermission is over. I will. I'll be on my way. You know, I'm not a critic tonight. I've come just because I wanted to. And I'm sure that it's going to be a proud night for both of you. Proud? Uh, Mr. Downs! Nora, the intermission is over. What did you mean by proud, Mr. Downs? I meant about Tony, Nora. He's become quite a musician. In fact, one of the most promising of our young Americans. Tony? Tony? John? Nora, you're such a mule. I had to get you here somehow. <laughs> In harmony with our ideal of giving a hearing to young American composers, it is my privilege to present a new modern rhapsody for trumpet and orchestra with Harry James playing the trumpet part and conducted by the composer Tony Salerno.